Welcome to Underrated Democracy. Five minutes, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Brennan. Uh, a couple of loose threads that I want to continue uh, discussing uh, with you based on questions you've uh, received from colleagues. I, I get the overall impression that uh, you wish to uh, distance yourself from any formal or informal relationship uh, with Mr. Christian Firth. And I can probably understand your motivation to do that, given that he's testified twice at this committee. His credibility is certainly an issue. He's been caught in a number of lies. And he's under investigation by the RCMP. So I'm going to give you an opportunity, sir, to reflect on my comments as I ask you further questions about your relationship with Mr. Firth. But before I do that, I want to go back uh, to the original Bill Curley, sorry, Bill Curry article in the Globe and Mail from early October that really sets out um, towards the latter end of the article about your involvement in the Bottler uh, uh, controversy and scandal uh, with the government. And uh, specifically, um, the uh, reporter reached out to you um, you indicated uh, to the reporter that your reference to having inside knowledge was a fabrication. Uh, you clarified that and you said you fibbed, F-I-B-B-E-D, in an effort to put pressure on Ms. Dutt to take more action on the file. Now, we're all adults in the room. The last time I, I heard the word fibbed was in relation to my five-year-old twins uh, they're 14 now, but they certainly don't use the word fibbed. I use the word lied. So do you admit, sir, that you definitely lied to Miss Dutt to take so-called action on the file? Is that correct? Am I reading that correctly? Uh, <clears throat> Chair, thank you for the question. No, I did not lie. Um, there were conversations, uh, open conversations around the use of GEDs, and that is what I used to identify people inside of the DPMO. I'm going to stop you right there. You said you didn't lie, but you used the word fibbed. What's your definition of fibbed? Well, if they don't recall the conversation, then the interpretation would be that I fibbed. And, sir, you're quoted as saying, I fibbed in an effort to put pressure on Ms. Dutt to take more action on the file. You are admitting this to Bill Curry, a reporter for the Globe and Mail. If that's not a definition of a lie, I don't know what is. What is your definition of fibbed? You'd have some great difficulty in this because you want to maintain your credibility, sir. But you've admitted to a reporter that you lied to your client, that you had a contractual relationship with. We had marketing discussions based on hypothetical scenarios. You deliberately now, lied to Ms. Dutt, a principal owner of Bottler AI, who had a contractual relationship with you to do a service on their behalf to make a connection with the government. And now you've now admitted to all of Canada, and certainly this committee, and to Bill Curry, that you deliberately lied to her. You wanted to exaggerate, correct? Question, uh, Chair, thank you for the question. That's incorrect. Ms. Dutt was part of those conversations and well understood that we were doing, that it was a marketing effort and that we had several hypothetical scenarios given the workplace harassment management and GCAI adoption strategy were still evolving. So did you lie to Bill Curry then by saying that you lied to Ms. Dutt? Is that a lie upon a lie? It, it wasn't a lie upon a lie, sir. It was basically not... It get... It's your definition of fibbed, okay? I'll take that. Um, I don't know if Canadians will, but I'll accept that for the purposes of the time that I have. You then further re uh, respond to, uh, to Bill Curry in an email and a follow-up phone call, and you quote, and you're quoted as saying, I did not and do not have any contacts within the Liberal government, nor in the PCO. Now, Setting aside the PCO, based on what I've heard so far for the past one half hour, that statement again would be a lie because you've already referenced a number of government officials. It's not just, as you, as you put it, I deal directly with directors and managers. 
you've dealt directly with deputy ministers, assistant deputy ministers, if not ministers themselves. So why are you continuing to lie, sir, is the question I put to you. And I have to cut you off there, uh, Mr. Brock, and I'm sorry, Mr. Brennan, you'll have to respond in Mr. Brock's next uh, intervention. Uh, Mr. Uh, Jawari, welcome back. Happy New Year. Five minutes, please. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Happy New Year to all my colleagues and um, all, all the staff. Um, uh, Mr. Brennan, I'm going to frame my questions to you over the next five minutes around three three different pillars. Number one, I want to start with the arrive camp, which is really the focus of this study. So a um, uh, number of quick questions. Uh, sir, did you ever work on arrive camp? Chair, thank you for the question. No, I did not. Okay. Um, have you, uh, did you have any type of discussion with GC strategies or anybody at CVSA whatsoever that had anything to do with, C uh, with arrive camp? Uh, Chair, thank you for the question. No, I did not. Um, are you aware of any investigation arrive arrive camp by RCMP, or have you been approached by RCMP as it relates to arrive camp? Chair, thank you again for the question. No, I have not. Okay, so nothing to do with arrive camp, which is really the focus of this this committee right now under this study. So thank you for that. the The next um, the next area that I want to focus is is Butler AI. So um, your relationship with Butler AI, as you uh, identify was that you were hired uh, on a separate contract by Butler AI um, to provide a, um, a a consulting services for a period of uh, I think from February first to I believe you said uh, August first uh, August yeah, first, August 1st uh, for the total sum of $2,565.10. Can you briefly, briefly tell us what was the scope of that work? Uh, um, yeah, under under the contract, I can't identify specifics, but I can say that, again, it was primarily for research, uh, document compilation and report writing. Okay, so um, it, you, it is alleged that you um, boasted about your relationship to be able to secure a $2,565.10 contract. Can you comment on that, sir? Um, I, I I can't comment. Um, it, to your point, that would seem very ludicrous that I would do that. Okay, so um, have you been contacted? Are you aware that there, there is an investigation by RCMP as well as an internal investigation with CBSA around Butler AI? I, I uh, again, sure. Thank you so much for the question. No, I am not aware of any uh, any RC. I've not been contacted by them or auditors. Okay, so you've not been contacted by RCMP. You're not contacted by internal audit. Anyone in there, uh, and as you as you suggested, the, the is at least at least the way you explained uh, the the Butler AI two thousand five hundred uh, sorry two thousand five hundred sixty five dollars and ten cents for some sort of consulting. Um, there, there was somehow this urge to be able to boast about your relationship with ADM, which looks like was around three other projects. Um, okay, so so let's go talk about uh, the uh, the third and the final uh, frame that I want to uh, or areas that I want to focus on, which was your 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 responses to um, to the media and um, w why media would frame. Um, uh, something like this. Uh, uh, as that you have a relationship with somehow the Minister of Finance and to the deputy and, you know, you, you prepare the letter and you have a relationship. Why would media do that? Uh, <clears throat> sure, thank you for the question. Uh, to be candid with you, I, I, I can't comment on why they would do that, but I can share with you that all of the conversations that I had with Bottler, uh, specifically uh, marketing discussions, were based on hypothetical scenarios. Uh, those hypothetical scenarios, based on the fact that workplace harassment was is quite a hot topic, um, and the fact that the federal government hasn't landed on an approach yet, neither has industry, quite candidly, with AI, um, that those conversations taped are, have all been taken out of context because, again, they were hypothetical and speculative conversations. 